One of the more intriguing programs in college football gets underway for spring practice starting on April 1st. We're talking about uh, Jim Moore's UCLA Bruins. Of course, the Bruins down for quite a long time, going back to the Cade McNown era back in the late 1990s. But Jim Moore has brought the Bruins back to respectability. Are they able to take another step in 2014? We bring in Brian Lee of Bleacher Report to talk about the Bruins. Brian, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me again, Mark. Okay, we know Brett Hundley is the face of this program to a certain extent. He had an exceptional season last year, 24 touchdowns, 9 picks, uh, off to a great uh, stellar career at UCLA, 11 rushing touchdowns, not necessarily the polished quarterback that's ready to go on to the NFL at this point, so he made a wise decision returning to college. Uh, your thoughts about Brett Hundley as he tries to progress into an elite college quarterback? Yeah, you know, it's it's weird the way his NFL stock is regarded and, and to see the quarterbacks in the draft maybe starting to slip a little, you'd think he might regret for a second coming back, but I agree with you. He, he definitely made the right decision. Um, he's got all the tools, especially toward the end of the season. He showed how good he is running against, you know, a really good USC and Virginia Tech defense. Um, but his, his, his mechanics are off sometimes. He, uh, he, he really struggles getting the ball out on time. He takes a lot of sacks. Um, they've been in the bottom, you know, maybe 10 or 15 in sacks taken both of the past two years when he's been starting. Um, and part of that's on the offensive line, which I'm sure we'll touch on, but a lot of it's on him. And that's the kind of thing that if, if college football sometimes moves too fast for you, I promise the NFL is. So I think this year is going to be really good for him. Another year playing against – you know, pretty fast Pac-12, uh, and if he can start getting the ball out quicker and making more sound, confident decisions on what should be a good team, I don't see any reason he can't, you know, at least be in the Heisman conversation for most of the season. Yeah, if I think uh, Brett Hundley's decision was all based on making money and getting into the NFL and just making a roster, there's no question he would have done that, and somebody would have taken a gamble on him probably in late first round. So it's not like he would have been sitting around for two days waiting to get drafted. He's got the size and all the tangibles you talked about, a very strong arm, and he's an elite athlete. He's a freakish type of athlete, but did not have the polish, does not have the accuracy to throw and complete passes in the NFL into tight windows. So it's going to be very beneficial for him to come back uh, to UCLA and be coached by a guy that has coached two NFL teams and Jim Mora. Let's talk about the offensive line, very much upgraded. Uh, this has not been a physical, brute force football team in the past. Jim Mora is starting to change the culture in uh, Westwood. Let's look at the offensive line. They bring back four starters. They've got uh, Simon Goins and Torian White, two starters from 2012 who got injured last season. So the UCLA offensive line looks to be um, a strength coming into uh, 2014, possibly. Yeah. Um, it's weird because it's, it's been, I guess, the weakness of the offense the past couple of years, and they just lost their best player in Xavier Suofilo. Uh, but just because of the injuries you just mentioned last year, it forced a lot of underclassmen to play. Um, and they're returning 93 starts on the offensive line this year. It should be one of the most experienced groups uh, in the conference, if not the country. Uh, hopefully they can find a way to make that experience uh, gel and be cohesive. Um, because if they can get on the same page, I don't know if they'll ever be a dominant mauling rushing offense, but if they can improve their pass blocking, uh, it would be a big help to to Hundley's development, and to the whole offense. And I don't think they're going to maul anyone because the guys they have in the backfield are not going to maul anyone as well. We're not talking about Todd Gurley types in the backfield. Jordan James is a very talented running back, but he's a little guy at 5'9", and not even pushing 200 pounds. Uh, he's a bit smallish, 500 yards last season, five touchdowns, and you got Paul Perkins, who basically got generally the same amount of touches as well. So um, shape up the uh, UCLA backfield for us. Yeah, James James uh, was banged up a little bit last year. I, I think he's the tentative favorite to start if he's healthy. Uh, him and Perkins are both serviceable, albeit underwhelming running backs, I'd say. They're, you could do worse, but you could do better. 
uh, unless one of them takes a leap this offseason. James definitely has the talent. They're, they're both guys who will get yards if they're there. Uh, they've also got a redshirt freshman in Craig Lee, who everyone really likes. Um, he had some problems academically at the start of last season, came in late, took a red shirt. Um, but if James or Perkins just continues to be status quo in the backfield and he has a good spring, good fall, he could be a contributor next year. And we definitely can't let the running back position go without throwing out the wild card, Miles Jack. You bring this guy from a linebacker position, just all of a sudden say, hey, we're going to give you some carries, and he's ripping off 100-yard games in the Pac-12. Uh, seven yards per carry, seven touchdowns, and just it was just amazing to watch. Uh, I believe he was the freshman of the year in the Pac-12 offensively and defensively. Um, your, your thoughts about Miles Jack, what did they do with Miles Jack? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he stated that he's a linebacker. He's not a running back. I'm a linebacker. So he doesn't necessarily want to get the carries, but he was just a beast. Right. Um, he's a linebacker. Uh, the, coaches, the coaches know he can play both. They think it's harder to find a good linebacker than a good running back. They prefer to keep him on defense. I think for the most part they will. <laughs> if, if they're down seven with a minute left and they've got the ball on the five, uh, they might be tempted to throw Jack in there just to plow through for a touchdown. Uh, I'd be surprised if he ended the season with zero carries. I think he'll, he'll get more than that, but for all intents and purposes, he's a linebacker. Yeah. Let's look at the wide receivers. Uh, Brian, when you look at these wide receivers, uh, these guys to me aren't um, Mike Evans at Texas A&M or the LSU guys, uh, Beckham or Landry, Allen Robinson. They're not freakish. They're not real standout guys, but they're very solid, very good speed, decent size, but nobody really stands out as a playmaker. They lose Shaq Evans. They've got Lucy and Fuller and Peyton coming back. They all caught in the 40 uh, receptions range. Uh, your thoughts about the UCLA uh, passing attack from the wide receiver position? Yeah, it's. I think it's a blessing and a curse to have these three guys because UCLA uses so many multiple receiver sets that it's good to have three guys who are all about equal and you know good quality FBS players. Uh, it's also hard for a quarterback to not know who his best receiver is, though. And all, all these guys just remind me of each other. Uh, so <laughs> I think UCLA is looking for one of them to step up, have a really good offseason. Uh, they also had a guy, Thomas Duarte. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pronouncing that right. Uh, he was a freshman last year. He's a bigger guy, which is you know different for them, a big physical target. They don't use a tight end, but he plays kind of like a wide tight end. Um, I think he set a freshman record last year for UCLA with three three hole touchdown receptions. Uh, but he's another guy to keep an eye on. If he can be physical across the middle, he can at least do something different than the other three guys who are, you know, really just really good versions of each other. We're uh, talking to Brian Lee of Bleacher Report. We uh, did a couple uh, videos with Michigan State. I'm going to put UCLA in a similar category, although they didn't achieve the heights of Michigan State last season, top five in the country and 13 wins and a Rose Bowl win, but still uh, they've certainly upgraded the ante, uh, moved the ante up there in the last few years under Jim Mora. So your thoughts about the UCLA program in regards to what is the potential, the ceiling to me, and this is why I called it off the top, one of the more intriguing programs in the country seems to be basically limitless because of the location, resources, everything seems to be in place, and now an NFL coach who has certainly instilled discipline. Uh, your thoughts about the UCLA program? Yeah, I agree, and I, I think if you're looking for, for proof of that, look no further than, than the fact that Jim Moore is still there. Um, he was flirting with Washington this offseason, which is you know his school. That's when he was the coach of the Atlanta Falcons, he said, I would leave the Atlanta Falcons if I got offered the Washington job. Mm -hmm. And he basically just turned them down because, I mean, what else could you be looking for besides what you have at UCLA? It's perfect weather. And now they're starting to bring in, you know, five-star recruits like Josh Rosen. They're starting to win football games. I, I think they're going to compete for a Pac-12 South title, Pac-12 title, maybe even a, a spot in the college football playoff this year. Man, it, it, it seems like it's the seedlings of a potential, you know, really good program. 
the only thing that would be holding them back is if USC gets back to where they were, where they're USC again, and just starts poaching all the good recruits in the area. Yeah, it should be a fun South Division race to watch. Arizona State winning last year, USC coming off 10 wins. They lost a ton of talent. They're still kind of reeling from some scholarship reductions, but USC is going to be fine. They're a solid football team, and uh, they've got the quarterback, uh, Cody Kessler, in place for another season, so his improvement should continue as well. And, of course, UCLA right here. So we're talking some UCLA football with Brian Lee. Brian, uh, can you talk about uh, what you uh, have on tap in regards to some of your work at uh, Bleacher Report? Uh, yeah, I can. I've uh, been writing about Auburn a lot this offseason. Uh Really been covering, touching on the whole national landscape. Uh, I've been been looking at UCLA, not necessarily writing about them, but getting ready to write about them uh, because I I I think that that if I may be so bold in March, where it doesn't really mean anything, <laughs> I I think that they could they would be my prediction to to win the Pac-12 right now. Okay. We may have just previewed the Rose Bowl with Michigan State taking on UCLA, possibly. Yeah, that, I'd, I'd have no complaints about that one. All right, Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back to talk some UCLA defense. Yeah, thanks for having me.